Hi everyone, this is Ona with Art of Awakening and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing a reading here, um, mostly with spirit animals and an uh, energy update because we're moving into coming up in, almost to the, the full moon in Sagittarius here in June 2019. Coming up and I've been feeling just a lot, a lot of emotional kind of energy moving up. A lot of divine feminine energy really coming forward. Um, and a lot of sacral chakra activation in um, in the collective. I'm just feeling this for the collective. Huge amounts of kind of flow and opening up for for, for greater activation of the sacral. Why is this important? Because... I've been feeling for some time that, you know, we are really coming up towards this, this, um, so, uh, you call it, um, solstice coming up, right? Uh, summer solstice. And it's, this has been feeling to me for a long time, like I've been seeing this as this like really, really, really big energy shift. I mean, I know we've been having lots and lots of big shifts, but this is like huge. This is a big one. This is like turning point time, right? Um, and I'm really feeling like it's it's this real turning point of really starting to embody the divine feminine as a collective on the planet. Now, this doesn't mean that everything's going to shift immediately right there, because like any transition, it, it takes place over time. But I think if we step back and look at the bigger picture of kind of what's happening, we'll see that, you know, this shift actually is happening very, very quickly. And I'm expecting that after this solstice, we're really going to see an acceleration in um, just potentially old paradigms starting to really crumble, um, new ones starting to grow up out of that. And I, I think there's, there's a lot happening right now that's really helping to open up that door for that kind of thing to happen. And this is really talking about bringing um, a new spiritual consciousness physically into the world. Okay. So the sacral chakra is super important for that. It's super important um, as a, as a creative center, as a, a, a kind of a energetic center for, um, you know, helping this to, to actually come to being birthing a new, a new sort of reality. Um, so I, I did this painting a little while back. You may have seen the video of, of, about it when I when I created it. But this is the kind of energy I'm talking about. Um, you know, a lot of flow. It's enabling a lot of new new kind of growth. Now, any time that there's change, change is can be very volatile, um, and it's. It can be really fun and like, oh yes, this is this is great, this is fun. It can also be challenging. Okay, so just a few power animals that have really been coming forward lately that I think collectively between them um, help to kind of shed light or to to ease this transition. Um, you know, if we kind of listen to what they're saying. Um, one is snake. It's going to be coming forward a lot, and this is a painting I did last year with snake, but I think it's pertinent right now um, because I think. A certain amount of this kind of emotional thing has to do with with the heart, um, with processing loss, with processing grief, with processing, um, you know, a romantic relationships. Sometimes will bring all that kind of stuff up, and uh, so if if you know if you've been kind of moving through that. Um, just know that the, this is all about shedding. Okay, this is all about shedding the old in order to have this beautiful new growth coming up okay so whether it's a, a romantic stuff or anything else that's coming up um just being aware of you know what's happening allowance and acceptance is huge okay so there's been a lot like i said a lot of divine feminine i've been working very closely with uh green tara which is a uh, I think she's a Buddhist goddess or to whatever she is. She's, she's um, very, very connected with nature and with the, yeah, is Buddhist. Um, very connected with nature and, and with the uh, um, Mother Earth. 
right? Um, and, and one thing that's really been coming forward for me very, very strongly as, as I was given a direct download yesterday, I went down to the lake and uh, was looking at the, the water and noticing all the ripples in the water, all this, this flow. Uh, this is Lake Superior. And these beautiful, beautiful patterns were emerging out of this water. And I was told very clearly that the patterns in nature actually will very directly activate things within us and to, to help us, you know, through this change. Um, so I show you right outside my window here, there's a, a shrub a bush and uh, it doesn't work with me. So where you are, um, you know, see if you can spend real time looking at something in nature that has this kind of pattern, whether it's ripples of water or leaf patterns, because exposing yourself to those will directly give you these activations, right, that will help to facilitate and to ease any kind of discomfort that you're going through with the shift and the change. Very, very calming and very grounding. Okay. Um, so a couple other, a couple other um, kind of power animals that have been coming forward lately, um, just that I've noticed, uh, Raven is one. And again, this is an animal that uh, she's associated with um, being a messenger. I see Raven really as uh, helping bring awareness and a bridging kind of action between heaven and earth, between the spirit and the um, you know mundane world, also between um, kind of the, the life death kind of deal, right? So if there may be ancestor activity happening. This might be a really good time to uh, enabling us to kind of thinning of the veils kind of thing um, to connect with ancestors, right? Um, ancestors are really important because they, the bones of the earth, right? They help us to reconnect to, to reconnect to the earth to, to um, you know, the ancestors have that experience of having lived and died and gone through the cycle. Um, so if you're able to connect with ancestors at all, there may be some messages, again, messages, the messengers of the raven being, um, brought through to you, um, you know, from, from that, 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 that spiritual, um, support that, that we have for us. Okay. Another animal that's coming forward right now, big time is horse and, um, we're moving into a full moon in Sagittarius. Uh, so Sagittarius does have a lot of horse energy. Horse also has a lot. I see it as a very, very sacral chakra. It has a lot of connection with the sacral chakra. Um, and it's got a lot of kind of forward momentum sort of energy, but it's also a very emotional kind of animal, right? And so horse, working with horse has a lot to do with working with the emotions and learning to ride those emotions, right? Without getting, you know, uh, kind of blindsided by them, um, kicked in the face by them, uh, landing on your butt, uh, you know, being bucked off. Anyway, so, so, so working with horses, um, there's a few people online or on, on, on YouTube that work with horses. I'm trying to remember their names, but if you can look up like natural horsemanship or something, very interesting to see these people work with wild horses because um, they you learn a lot about working with your emotions when you do that. Um, a horse, a, a lot of us right now that have incarnated have been like we're warrior spirits, right? A lot of us, if you have a lot of fire in your chart, um, and you're feeling called to assist with this entire ascension, you probably had a lot of lifetimes as a warrior. And that uh, can can mean that there's a lot of emotional stuff that maybe has not been uh, processed, right? That may have to come up. Um, or the sense of urgency where, oh my gosh, I gotta do something, right? Um, so that, that kind of fire, um, 
It can be very emotional. It can be extremely, um, it's a get it done kind of thing. And, and it's needed right now because we do have to make shifts in society. We've got to, you know, society, there's any kind of, kind of change, there's stuff to be done, right? <laughs> you know, so your ability to uh, kind of move forward, to, to put that energy to channel it into positive ways, that's the positive side of horse, really, because a horse can help us to really uh, jump over obstacles, right? Although, so if you've ever seen the Lipizzan stallions and they do this fantastic leaps, um, those were originally battle moves and they were designed to maybe even bring, you know, leap right over the, the head of the enemy or, you know, so, so the enemy in our case really is just these uh, negative beliefs, all, all that stuff. Um, and in order to really navigate that, to jump over it or, or to, you know, we got to work the emotions, right. Um, and allowing them to be fluid. So when we, when we're riding a horse, it's not a machine, right? So we can't treat it like a machine. And if we get mad at the horse for reacting, you know, it, it, um, in a way that maybe <laughs> doesn't serve us too well, um, getting mad at it or, or uh, judging it, whatever it makes, doesn't help at all, does it? But if we accept that it is a horse, that it's got these emotions and it reacts for a reason and that the reason is good, right? Um, horses react out of fear because they're prey animals, right? Um, so part of this is about just the acceptance and allowance, acceptance of, you know, um, those parts of us that have reactions. There's good reasons, right? Um, there's nothing, it doesn't mean that we're bad. It doesn't mean that we're not, you know, we don't need to judge. And, and this is something that came forward for me uh, about last week. And had this very beautiful feminine, um, divine feminine kind of uh, message, message that came through. It was like, because um, I was working through some emotions and I realized that I had to work through these emotions, even though they didn't, my mind was like, these aren't appropriate. Um, my mind was like, you know, <laughs> you shouldn't have to do this. But I was given this realization that my emotions didn't know the difference. My emotions don't know right or wrong. They just know what they feel, right? The emotional body feels, and that's its job. And in the feeling, it just like a horse is very sensitive, and it will pick up on things that the rider doesn't, and in its reaction, if it's, a, if it's a sensitive rider, the rider will notice what's happening with the horse and maybe uh, become aware of things that need to be aware of, right? And that's what the emotions do for us. Um, so I had to realize that even though, like, maybe it wasn't quote unquote appropriate and that I had to learn, you know, figure out how to, to, to process those emotions, still the emotions themselves were legitimate, right? And, and as soon as I was able to accept and then allow those emotions to flow and accept that I was it was just like a normal human reaction that I'm human it's okay to be human as soon as able to process that huge huge breakthrough for me and and it just really helped to heal a lot of physical issues that I've been working with as well as kind of emotional so um, just that allowance and and just working with the emotional body and allowing it to flow allowing those emotions to flow and in a safe way, like if you're going to, you know, if you're working through rage, you need to find a safe, like just like put the horse in a corral or something and work with it. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, the, the the last animal that's been coming forward a lot, um, aside from snake, did I say that? Um, you know, the snakes, um, that's the shedding kind of thing, that regeneration. Um, and also this Kundalini deal coming up, but the sloth has been coming forward. And I see sloth as... A slow down card, right? Um, but also a connect with nature card. Um, and this this came up in a conversation. It came up in a reading. It came up, uh, um, but but a sloth is sort of this. You know, it tells us how to just kind of take a breather. Um, and they've got that algae that grows in the in the fur. It's just like talking about really incorporating nature. Like I was mentioning with like watching 
the nature and it'll give us activations. The more we can weave nature into our everyday lives and pattern ourselves after nature, how nature does things. And also recognizing that we are nature ourselves, that we are nature, okay? And that's why we, you know, this this whole um, overcoming judgment, a lot of it is just recognizing that we are nature. It's like there is this whole attitude that, you know, we are, that, that, that we as a human, human as, as a species are ruining nature, that we're, you know, there's this whole kind of war kind of thing, um, you know, that, that's going on in our minds. That's part of this releasing the judgment, right? Um, to accept ourselves as a very integral part and important part of nature, that we have our place. And that once we accept ourselves as part of the natural order, then we can start to find our place and to honor and respect that place. But we've got to accept it first, right? We've got to accept it and, and you know, um, recognize that part of what we're going through is just, you know, things that are have their basis in a natural instinct to save or protect ourselves and that we have to use our mind because one of our superpowers as a, as a, as a species, as our own, we are a power animal, right, um, is, is the mental capacity. Okay, we share that with Raven, they're really smart, but we have taken it to like umpteenth degree. Um, and the, the, the mental capacity Yes, it's gotten to us, us to this place, but the next step is to use that mental capacity to not to fix it, right? Because we already have all the technology we need to have, be living heaven on earth. We've, we've gotten there. We've got the technology. So the next step is to, you know, work with the mind so that we can start accepting and allowing spirit, right, to, 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 to step into humility and to find our place. Right. And that involves a lot of releasing. So it involves releasing um, the fears. Right. And you can see how all this is connected and it is momentous. It's huge. It's this huge change. Right. So with that said, we do a little reading for the full moon. Um, I'm going to be using, because I have my, well, should I use my own deck? Let me all use my own deck. Um, do a little shuffling here. See what comes forward. But one of the things that really before I even start is coming forward, before I even pick a card, um, is that coming up over the full moon, um, especially if there's family involved, I'm going to want to just plan for allowing the flow to happen. Okay. So. Oh my, Raven came up. Raven, and there's another card that came up too. Oh, maybe that was two. No, oh, let's see. You know what? I'm going to shuffle more. Cause that, I'm going to shuffle more. I'm going to shuffle more. I just, it was Raven, of course, that came up. I mean, honestly, and I did shuffle. You heard me shuffle, didn't you? And they pulled, like, I don't know, pulled right out of the middle of the cards. Because when I, when I pull, cards, I, I shuffle well, and then I'll just kind of like feel into what was coming up. And actually what came up was Raven and Horse, and I swear I shuffled. Um, I think I already kind of went over that. So let's see if there's a message that's coming up specifically for this full moon period. Um, all right, this one's definitely popping up, and it is hummingbird. All right. Um, beautiful. Okay, because this Hummingbird, I really associate with joy, with beauty, right? Because this change does not have to be hard. We've come through a big period of like, oh my gosh, you know, we're hitting one thing after another. And, um, you know, this whole ascension process, it can be beautiful. It's beautiful, right? So it's time to bring beauty into it. It's time to be aware of joy, right? It can be a joyful process. And even if there's um, more stuff to you know, more stuff to purge or whatever, we can, um, you know, I think that that allowance is going to be big. Just accepting and allowing we're human is going to happen. Um, but also 
anticipating that the beautiful, beautiful, wonderful emotions, those are there too. And those are there to be unlocked, right? So um, a lot of all this purging that has happened, that's, that's been unlocking, starting to unlock the doors for joy to come forward, right? For us to start living a beautiful life. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's what my channel is about. It's about starting to uh, own ourselves as creators, as creator beings, so that we can actually proactively choose to bring into our lives the beauty and the joy that really is our birthright, okay? Um, and, and using our creative power, whether it's in actually creating artwork or just creating a beautiful life, right? Um, we have that open to us. Um, so one, one way I guess that I'm getting for, um, for attracting more joy, for doing this in a joyful way, first of all, is the environment. Um, creating an environment or seeking out environment. Hummingbird seeks out the beauty, right? Seeks out the flowers. Um, so seeking out things that you can go to, you know, or bring into your home or you know, like I'm getting, if you have some kind of family reunion coming up over this next few weeks, um, consider consider the environment. What environment is it? Is it, is it a place that's beautiful? Is it a place that um, where people can kind of feel relaxed, right? That environment's going to be huge and, and it'll, it'll make a difference whether the energy that everybody brings into that gathering, um, whether it's a, a nice energy that can flow beautifully or if it's going to be kind of flowing in a way that maybe isn't serving us, right? Um, and also structure. Um, because sometimes it's like just planning ahead a little bit doesn't mean you have to micromanage, but setting the tone, always setting the tone. Uh, this may be getting enough sleep, right? Just just proactively thinking in terms of what is going to open the doors or what's going to allow for things to flow beautifully. Okay. So I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, energy update and, and reading for the full moon in June 2019. If you feel like you could use a little personal support, um, the link to that is below. I have a couple of reading sessions that I offer and um, can help to, uh, especially with the power animals, but, you know, just working with moving energy as well, helping to balance any kind of um, stuck energies that you may be experiencing to move, help, you know, energies move through so that you can move forward and, and, and you know, be more proactive and creative in creating the life that you want, right? Um, thanks again for watching. And as always, I love your comments. Love to hear uh, your your thoughts and any downloads that you got while watching this video. Um, would love for you to share that, right? Have a lovely, have a lovely day and we'll get you again soon.